me, it was like a grieving process at first to go through um, the, a, a huge sense of loss because of the familiarity and all of the things that were so meaningful to me on Tuesdays when I painted, on Sundays when I worshiped, and in between with other events. And it's caused me to realize what really is valuable to me about the church, which is, of course, the people, and how I can reconnect with them, how I can uh, continue to have that relationship has become much more important than the actual participation itself. And it's caused me to reimagine what the church is, which is so much more than a building, as, as we know now. And so even though we're going through a, a terrible thing, which I hope we don't have to go through again in our lifetime, I feel like I've come away from this um, because of the church, richer and um, more excited about what's ahead. Well, let's start off to show you my new office, <laughs> which happens to be our guest bedroom. Back in the beginning of the year when uh, the governor told us to vacate the premises and shut down for a little while, um, my answer to Mother Sarah was, well, I'm just going to work in my office because no one will come in. But she encouraged me for safety reasons to take my computer and everything home, which I did, thinking in two, three weeks, I'll just be back. For me, especially being the front of the church where people call and people come in, I was pretty worried about how those connections and relationships were going to continue. But I stepped back and took a deep breath and figured out how we were going to remain connected. And it really is as if I am still sitting in my office, except I either talk to people on the phone or on Zoom. Um, and if anything, I've had more relationships now. From the beginning, we've said the church is, you know, the building's closed, but the church is open. And that's honestly very, very true. I kind of got uh, pulled into this whole whole thing, um, as is kind of demonstrated by my fancy headset here, as the resident IT guy. I think looking at it from the more technical side, there are some areas where we can improve, and there are some areas where we did amazing um, from the get-go. And I think that's just kind of the nature of the beast. It's that we are all thrust into this completely new environment. And as Barbara said, um, we all adapted. It's been hard on a lot of people for sure. Um, and it's been very different. Uh, obviously, you know, you don't normally have church in space or in Marvel superheroes headquarters or your bedroom. What is important about the church to you? Um, and I think at St. John's, it's definitely, it's the people. Um, and so we've taken the approach that best suits that, this kind of Zoom Brady Bunch-esque church uh, mode. And does that have everything to offer? No, certainly. But it's we've had to kind of um, dissect, I guess, what is the most important part of the church and take that piece out and really embolden uh, that piece. Um, I think we all kind of know deep down after this, nothing will be the same. And that for sure includes church. Um, that's why uh, we are putting in the time and effort to try and figure out a more permanent solution to bring the church into the 21st century, truly. And um, I think for me, as the part of reimagining curacy and reimagining church, I never thought that church would be like this. But here we are, connecting with people in real world. We are here grieving, we agree, but there's hope. God has given us hope. I think that's what we are seeing here. And thank you, Susie. Thank you, uh, Bob. Thank you, Jack, uh, for stepping in 
we all stepped in and we're doing our part for the glory of God.